In today's video, we're going to discuss the importance of your tenor drums and how they might just be the center of your bagpipe sound. Stay tuned. Well, hello everybody, I'm Matt Willis Bagpiper, and on this channel I make videos to make you a stronger and more confident piper. If you like this kind of content, please think about giving the video a like, subscribing to the channel, and hitting that bell icon to be notified of when I post new videos. I also teach Skype and online lessons if you want more personalized instruction, but more on that later. So today I wanted to discuss the drones, and more specifically, the tenor drones. I think sometimes an overlooked part of this instrument. I think all too often pipers, especially beginning pipers, tend to think of the drones as something they try to almost ignore while focusing on the sound of their chanter. But really, I think nothing could be further from the truth. The more you're able to focus in on the sound and resonance and all of the awesome things that are happening with your tenors, the better, more stable, more musical I feel your playing will be. So for anyone who's ever stood in a circle in a pipe band, you know the first time it happens, it's a rather odd feeling because you cannot hear your chanter. I suspect strongly that it's a few things. One is that the chanter is not in a very good place for you to hear it while you're playing your own pipes. And when you're in the circle, the piper across from you, his chanter is pointing basically straight at you. So you're going to hear far more of your neighbors than yourself when it comes to your melody pipe. But you know what you can listen to when you're in the circle? This guy right here. You might not be able to pick up all of your drones, but you should be able to cue in to your middle tenor. It's right there, it's right by your ear, and I found that focusing my energy, focusing my ear on what this is doing while focusing my eyes on what my pipe major was doing went a long way to helping me blend in with everybody. When I first started playing in a pipe band, I was trying to just have my chanter keep being blended, keep being disappeared, if you will, into the sound of the overall pipe band, but I found the lack of something was harder to focus on than the presence of something. So by listening to my tenor, I could hear, am I going up in pitch? Am I going down? Am I going all over the place? I mean, we don't want any of those. We want do, nice and flat, steady, even, resonant drone sound. But also think about the tenors from this perspective. It's the only part of the instrument that was deemed so important, there's two of them. Thank goodness we don't have two chanters, but we also don't have two basses. And I don't know about you, but when I'm going to tune my pipes, I don't start with my bass. I don't know if I've ever seen anyone start with their bass drone. Everyone starts with one of their two tenors. And there's all sorts of different orders, and even if you're tuning them all at the same time, I still see pipers reach up and try to get one of their tenors into tune before they go to the bass. So to me, that's saying it's not the bass that's the foundation of our sound, it's the tenors. And that the bass is like a subharmonic, if you will. It's this awesome, don't get me wrong, it kind of like might even be the soul of the whole instrument. But I think the heart of the entire instrument may well be the tenors. And then the chanter is the brains of the operation. You know, that's what's speaking and communicating the melody and everything else. But without a soul and without a heart, well, there might not be a lot there. I mean, I don't know about you, I don't tend to go around listening to lots of just pipe chanter music. I want to hear the whole instrument. And on a properly tuned set of pipes, one of the things that's also interesting is that while we have very strong fundamental A's, the note A at various frequencies, so let's say, let's say the chanter's coming in at 480. That means your tenors are going to be at 240, your bass is going to be at 120. It's that's half and then half again. So with octaves, when you double or half the frequency, you stay with the same fundamental pitch at different, well, octaves. But one of the things that makes a musical instrument sound different from another, the thing that makes a trumpet sound like a trumpet and a violin sound like a violin, is the harmonic sequence and which notes in that are brought out. So when you're playing a note on, say it's your chanter or your tenors or your bass, you're not just hearing that fundamental frequency in the case of the tenors, that 240, you're also hearing what's called the harmonic sequence or series. And you're welcome to look more into that. It's quite fascinating if you like numbers. But some of the early notes in that sequence for the tenors right here would be 240, the fundamental root note, if you will, coming out, the root frequency coming out. But then you also get an octave above that at 480. So that's actually the pitch of the low A on the pipe channer. But the next one is actually around 720, again, assuming a 480 low A. At 720, that is actually the E. And it's the exact E that is the fundamental frequency of the E on your pipe chanter. 
So that E of the pipe channel, that 720 hertz E is the same E that is present in the harmonics of the drones. Some of you folks that might have used the old Korg CA30s to tune your pipe band might remember bringing it up to the drones of one of your players and it actually registers an E rather than an A. Sometimes on a well set up set, the harmonic E can be so present as to um, actually be audible, like it's something you really do hear. I strongly suspect that's one of the reasons that the harmony drone on a set of small pipes is almost always set to an E. And the presence of that harmonic E, I think, just helps bring everything together. I mean, low A and E sound great together. It's a perfect fifth in musical terms. But we're getting ahead of ourselves with numbers and everything else. Just know that there's a lot more going on here than you might think. This is not something that we should be ignoring. It's something we should be leaning into. So here's something I would love everyone to try. Next time you get your pipes out, instead of focusing so much on the music, on the grace notes, on the technique, take some time and lean in to this middle tenor. I actually like to think about this tenor's for me, this tenor's for my audience. There's two of them. This is the one though that's kind of closest to you right there. You can really hear it. Take your ear, lean into the drones. I mean that old poem at the beginning of uh, the uh, College of Piping Tutor even talks about leaning a fond ear to the drones. Well, I think this is a lot of what they're talking about. But if you really do lean your ear into the drones, I think it can go a long way to making your overall sound more stable. If you're focusing on your drones, the music just has to come out anyway. One of my favorite things about, again, leaning my ear towards the drones, really trying to cue into that middle tenor while I'm playing a melody, is if while I'm doing that, I get off track of my tune, that's telling me I probably haven't put enough time into that tune, and maybe that would be a good time to maybe break out the practice channel on some off hours and get some extra time on that tune, get it really under the fingers so that when you get to your pipes next time and you go to play that same melody, you can think about your drone rather than the chanter. Because think about it, there's a lot going on on this disaster of an instrument that we all love. You're blowing, you're squeezing, you're trying to keep it stable, you're trying to make both melodic and percussive motions with your fingers. It's a lot to control. And we as humans are not very good at multitasking, regardless of what we tell ourselves. But think about the sound people often make when trying to meditate. Om. It's kind of a drone. So I think by listening to your drones, trying to actually separate out in your ear that middle tenor, even though they should all be tuned together, that it can put you in a place where you can more readily accept all of the things you're having to control at that time rather than focusing everything so much on just the melody or technique or whatever singular thing that you're actively thinking about. Instead, step back from yourself, from your piping while obviously still being engaged. Listen to that tenor. So if you do take this opportunity to really listen to your drones the next time you get your pipes out, lean into their sound and worry less about your technique this time, a little less about the melody, and more about your overall stability and tone, well, I just love to hear what your experiences are with that. So please, if you do that, comment below, and let me know what your thoughts are on it. So a little bit different of a video here, more thinking about how to play than how to play itself, but um, the drones are an integral part of our instrument. It's not a channer and this forest of noise we're trying to get through. It's the whole thing brought together there's a reason pipers discuss their drones when someone asks them what pipes they play. It's not that the channer is not important, the channer is critical, but this is the heart of your sound and you need to learn exactly what your drones sound like, how stable they are, and let them be part of your bagpipe sound, not something you're trying to work either against or across or through. Try to incorporate it into the sound of your whole instrument, not just your chanter. Well, if you got something out of this video, guys, please think about giving it a like, subscribing to the channel, and hitting that bell icon to be notified of when I post new videos. I also have a Patreon where as little as a dollar a month goes a really long way to helping support the channel, and a special shout out to Miss Carrie Tresek, my number one supporter, but she'll see names now of folks scrolling up. These are people that contribute monthly to the channel. They often get early access to videos and other perks, so go ahead, head over to my Patreon, and yeah, help support the channel. I also teach Skype and online lessons. Go ahead and head over to www.commandyourbagpipe.com or email me at the address you see down here and we'll get you going. I'm working with folks from all over the planet and I hope to work with you soon. I also have a line of Command Your Bagpipe merchandise with things like hats and hoodies and t-shirts. So go check that out and let the world know that you command your bagpipe. All right, everybody, I'm Matt Willis, Bagpiper. And until next time, cheers. Cheers.